Our home on wheels is coming along nicely. Welcome to our bus build series, guys. We're James and Alex. A few months ago, we decided it would be a great idea to convert an old school bus into our dream home on wheels here in Australia. So far, we've covered a lot, and you can find these videos in our bus build playlist. In today's vlog, we'll be building our workspace living area. We're just gonna check if it fits. And we even make time to add in a secret compartment. <sighs> Let's do this. So today we are going to be building a wall and attempting to make the rest of our benches. So just like our bed, we decided aluminium was the way forward for the main structure of our bench and frame for our fridge. We picked this up from a local aluminium supplier for about $3 a meter. So not only is it lightweight and easy to cut, it's cheap as well. With the help of our friend James, we drew out a plan and with some tricky twists and turns, managed to get the frame in. Our fridge. You open it up. And this is our bench we made earlier. This is gonna be... Obviously, you're going to have a top to it. <laughs> we need to do more leg days. <laughs> <laughs> This is where our desk and table area is gonna go. So we can either sit to have some food or if we need to use our laptops, it's gonna be a bit of a comfy lounge space. This is where the wall needs to go. So essentially what this is gonna do is hopefully give us a small shelf area uh, and it also is going to give us a straighter edge to be able to build the wall out because as you probably know Toyota Coaster is not straight up and down like other transit vans there's a big curve so it's making life a bit more difficult when it comes to needing to make things go straight up we're having to work around it and this has been a lifesaver so now we have a relatively straight line from the bottom to midway of the bus that allows us to have a wall going up. This is where Alice is going to sit. That's where I'm going to sit. We have a table in between us and uh, underneath it's all going to be relatively open. So we're going to have an AC unit here for us to be able to plug in our laptop chargers and it's going to have um, twin USBs as well. So when we want to charge our phones and as Alex pointed out, we will eventually have some sort of shelf. Oh, that's perfect. That's so good. It's going to look so good. I don't know how we did it, but somehow, just like our overhead, it has fit in perfectly. We didn't have to cut or modify this last piece and it fits in like a glove. Ah, looks so good. Oh my God, how epic. Oh, that's in. <laughs> it looks amazing! It's so good. And this, we have a wall! This has come out so good as well. Oh, I, you know what? I actually love the fact that that goes like that as well because it's going to be like yeah. such a nice clean little shelf. So before we actually screw in the screw to the aluminium and the shiplap, we're making pilot holes first, so it just seems to prevent the wood from splitting or snapping. Yeah, and it goes easy into the aluminium as well. Now, you might be wondering why there is a nice big hole here. And that is because we want to get access to our thin egg noodles <laughs> <laughs> because we want to make that part into a sneaky hidden wine rack and we are so excited we don't even need to go in the van we can just lean in and grab a bottle of wine it's gonna be great <laughs> Today's task is to create our hidden wine rack. So we've got this small section just under here, under the fridge. I've already used two lots of foil board for the bottom just to give it that little bit of insulation. And what we're gonna create is some sort of hatch that latches open and a pulley drawer that comes out. Now, we had these which are left over from the last build. They seem to be in pretty good condition. They tend to set you back a 
fair few dollars. So we're going to save a bit of money by reusing what we already have. How to do this? I genuinely have no idea. It really is a bit of a DIY project. So I've cut up two bits of wood. Now these are going to act as my frame or sides, which I'm going to fix these two. I then have to create a base and two sides for the drawer that's going to come out. And then we bought these tubes, which we are going to use to store the actual wine bottles in. So bear with me. I will try and document as much of it as possible. And hopefully we get the result that we're looking for. Ooh, that sugar sweet. You got what I need. Sipping on the potion. All that kind of potion. Just my kind of heat. Keep it on me. Tested by the potion. Moment of truth. Is it gonna fit? I hope that it does. Oh yes. We have our hidden pine rack. 60% complete. The next stage in our, here it is, wine rack is using this PVC that we picked up from Bunnings. Now this is perfect because it just fits a wine bottle in there. Now we're just trying to figure out how much of the wine bottle that we want showing in our wine rack. We have three of these. So if we do make a bit of a mess, we've got enough. That was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Last piece of the puzzle. Looking jazzy. <laughs> and so while James continues to build the bench top, the bench and the wine rack storage section, I'm gonna start with this, which is a wall that we actually want white. So I've just been drilling in the screws so they sit flush with the wood and then covering them with putty so this is what we're using this stuff here it was only about ten dollars a pop this is so much i don't even think we'll use a quarter of this but it's the only size that they come in but really i've just been pushing it on with my fingers and then letting it dry so when it dries it looks a little bit like this it's quite rough and coarse that's not quite dry yet but it's getting there and then i've been sanding it back so really you only have like a tiny bit left and then it's flush with the wood as well and then once that's done i'll give everything a bit of a wipe down with white spirit just with dry cloth let that completely dry and then it's pretty much ready to go with the paint so the paint we've been using uh, so far is the Taubman's Endure which we can leave a little link to and this was just one litre I'm pretty sure we're gonna need maybe a bit of a bigger one so I'm sure no doubt that will be another trip back to Bunnings because that is our life right now constant trips to Bunnings and we have Picasso over here painting <laughs> this wall well i have to say that is looking rather delicious and i don't mean your bottom it looks really good doesn't it this really is good. one coat of paint well, i mean we will do more just to give it like a really white finish but looks really good looks really, really good happy. i'm very impressed It's really good to see it starting to come together and start seeing some colours going in because a lot of it has been raw wood for so long. We definitely got a few messages on Instagram saying it was starting to look a bit like a sauna. So don't worry, we are painting some of the walls white and mixing it with some other colours as well. So these are the walls that we have already painted the three coats. It's dried a really, really nice matte finish, which is exactly what we wanted. 
and we've also done the fridge section as well. This is where our switch panel and everything's going to be going so we can read our water levels, our energy levels, battery and general light switches as well. So that's going to go all there. Uh, this wall is completely finished. We did three coats for this one. And this, I don't know if you can see the difference, but I did two coats on this one. I think it needs just one more. So that's why we're sticking with the three. It just covers up some of these little darker patches. So we've just tackled some of our foam. James did a very good job. Actually, it's not as easy to cut as we thought it was gonna be. So we did end up using the Stanny knife for most of it, and then just kind of finished off some ends with the scissors. So we're just gonna check if it fits. Hopefully our measurements are correct. <laughs> Hopefully our measurements are correct. And it's quite a stiff foam, actually. But- That looks pretty snug. Looks... Go on, give it a test drive. Is it really comfy? <laughs> Come and sit on as well. Oh! <laughs> it's going to be your seat, so. Oh, that is so comfy. It is so comfy. This one we went for is 100 mil thick, so I think it's probably one of the thickest ones you can get. And I, I think am it's um, medium to high density as well. So um, that's one thing you need to double check is no matter what foam you get, you can get different thicknesses, but you can also get different densities. So it comes down to like how well it cushions you. But honestly, this is like a cloud, like a high density cloud, <laughs> really good. So I am making a small incision. <laughs> you playing doctors. It does cut like butter, but it's the inside bit. You can see here, <laughs> that's, that's lovely, but yeah. I mean, now that you've changed the blade, it actually is making a big difference. So yeah. make sure you've got a nice sharp blade. Another bit done. Another bit done. It's getting very dark in here. Look at that. Test it out. So comfy. So the next bit that we're going to tackle is the shelf. So what we want to have here is a shelf running as far down as possible and I think we're going to try and tuck it in behind as well just because it makes sense. Um, and yeah, basically when we have our desk area we'll have a nice little shelf to put some pretty pots and our mugs of coffee. Is it just mugs of coffee or could it be mugs of tea or...? I mean probably glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> it is me and you. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, so this is our template. I've just made this because it will sit completely snug in this area here, or at least it should do. Nice work, Mr. James Lock. We'll go see if it fits. Let's go see if it fits. I think it's gonna fit. Oh. Yay! Oh my god, it looks so good! Oh, I'm so happy. That it is looks a so nice. Nice, snug fit. Yay! Oh, just gonna, you know, just chill here with my armrest on the shelf. <laughs> Somebody get me a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. <laughs> it looks so good! Happy. So the time has come for us to finally fix in the table. So this table is going to be our desk slash eating slash day bed. Slash office. Basically. <laughs> so we're reusing this table that came with the bus when we bought it. And what we're doing is we're making very small pilot holes just so we can go through the floor nicely and it doesn't kind of like tear up the floorboard. Whoops. And as usual, James knocked all the screws onto the floor. <laughs> Don't lose them, we only bought a pack of ten. <laughs> I know. Ugh. 
<laughs> we have a table. <laughs> One of those things that we've been putting off for ages for absolutely no reason. <laughs> pretty much. That's in there now, it's pretty solid. But what's good about this table is this is like a release mechanism or release lock, which allows us to move it this way, back that way, across, and even sideways. Ooh! Boom tang. Look at that. So we can now have a long table for work. I am focusing on the upholstery. So there's actually not a huge amount that needs to go in the bus, only really the front section, which is the lounge area. So we're gonna be having three cushions that definitely need to be upholstered, as well as the back cushions as well. I used to do a lot of sewing back in the day, but honestly, I barely even remember how to make the most simplest cushion that I'm not sure how I'm gonna go making a box cushion. So I've done a bit of YouTubing this morning just to refresh my memory. I went and bought a zipper foot because I forgot that I needed that as well. Um, so we're pretty much ready to go. So this is the material that we bought for the cushions. It's like a corduroy. It actually looks quite darker on camera than it is. It looks more like a brown, but it's actually more like a bit of a dark amber. So it's really starting to take shape. I now got pretty much a sewn cushion bar the zipper. I've just cut out a corner piece here and then I'm just gonna pull it across and sew across there which would give me my other corner so i'm going to go ahead and do that now and then it'll be time to put the zipper on so honestly that was so quick and i think maybe it, the sewing came back to me a bit better and a bit quicker than i thought it would um so yeah you almost have a cushion okay and this is what it looks like so i've got my corner pieces here um so they should hopefully sit around nicely onto the cushion and now it's time to put on the zipper. for the wet speak it's <laughs> dry and I but <laughs> we would I did <laughs> so I started this a couple of days ago <laughs> I can't talk today we bought this because we were gonna the reason being was the reason being was because we... But we 